let's get this guy rinsed off. Not a big giant salmon or a 50 pound halibut, but let me tell you something, man. These things are fun to catch. Ever get a wild hair up here? Sometimes I get them. I don't know where they come from or where they where they go. But every time I get a wild hair up my I have to do something about it. So today I've decided after about seven days of not feeling very well, came down with some kind of virus, I'm gonna go fishing. But I've got only three hours to do it, and I have to quit by 1230. So the closest lake to me, the closest body of water to me is American Lake. It's 11 miles from my house, and I'm going there right now. Let's go see what we can do. Maybe we can catch a fish or two. Welcome back to another episode of Northwest Fishing Fanatics Lake Fishing Adventures. Got a wild hair at my today and decided to uh, hit American Lake. I got a few hours, that's all I've got. Uh, I've been down and out for the last seven or ten days, ever since about three days before that Alder Lake video. Come up with some kind of, or come down with some kind of cold or virus or something and kind of knocked me out for about a week. But I'm back now with a vengeance. And these fish are gonna wish they never lived. So let's go over the gear we're gonna be using today. What I've got here on this, both the same rods, the surface rod and the downrigger rod is gonna be the same. We have a eight foot Okuma kokanee rod. I use kokanee rod for trout and kokanee. Same type of fish, same kind of fishery. Uh, this is a uh, conve Okuma convector reel spooled up, uh, the 100 series uh, with the line counter spooled up with 20 pound test power pro these dropper rigs that i made are made of 200 pound test mono, game, big game monofilament and the only reason i made it out of 200 instead of 100 or 150 is because that's what i had and that's what i use for my halibut rigs but anyway what we have here is all the all the fittings are crimped and shrink wrapped and the slider area is about a six inch slider here at the top it's just a small slider and with a barrel swivel and then about a three foot section let me get this off for you. Okay, and then about a three foot section down to a snap swivel again, and then that's where we attach the slider dropper rig to the uh, your choice of dodgers. And in this particular case, this is the half fast dodger that I'm gonna be using on this surface rod, and uh, this is the that is the hoochie that we're going to be using. This is the one that my wife was killing the fish on on Alder Lake last week. And now that I feel a little bit better because I was knocked out for about a week with that stupid virus that I had, uh, I figured I'd get out here and try to catch a few fish. I only have uh, about three hours. That's going to be the surface rod. I'll probably, I'm going to run it on the surface at first before I put any kind of weight on it to get it a little bit deeper. I want to see if I can catch some fish on the surface before I add any weight to it at all. I don't like fishing with any, anything more than uh, the, the least amount of weight possible. The downriggers are a little bit unusual. You probably don't see these very often. This might be the only, uh, I might be the only person that uses these. I've never seen them, you know, anywhere. Uh, but they're really popular in the Midwest, uh, Great Lakes area. It's a Big John downrigger, American made as opposed to the Scotties that are made in Canada. Uh, and it works really well. It's very simple, uh, all aluminum, and it's, it's a motor that goes up and down with a line counter. And it's just as simple as that. It's got a rocker switch for up and down. Um, and then uh, in the center of the rocker switch, of course, is off. So you have to pay attention to it when it's coming up because it won't stop once it hits the top and it'll just pop this fuse out if you, uh, if you don't turn it off. But you just got to pay attention. Unlike the Scotties, you know, you can you know, uh, bring it up and it'll automatically shut off. But they work really great, American made. Uh, and I like them. They came with the old, the, the big boat that I bought. Uh, so I did decided I'd just go ahead and use them instead of spending the you know the money on new Scotties. Why? Okay, and then the other rod is going to be the one on the downrigger. 
This is the one that's going to go on the downrigger. It's got the same rod, same reel, same line, 20 pound test Power Pro, but no dropper rig here uh, and uh, just straight to the, come on, straight to the Dodger and the Hoochie that I'm going to be dropping down um, on the downrigger. So this is the one we're going to start off with today. And this is the mini Hoochie that we're going to use on the downrigger rod. And we're going to tip these with big gulp maggots right here. Big gulp maggots. Okay, so uh, that's what we're going to be using. I'm going to jam on down to the other side of the lake and just start fishing from there. I see somebody in a kayak right there fishing. Nice. Let's go. Okay, I am not an expert at this lake at all. As I've said in many videos before, I'm not an expert at all. <laughs> I'm just a guy who likes to go fishing. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. If I, if I struggle breathing a little bit, I'm still, still struggling trying to whip this cough and this cold or this virus or whatever the hell it was that I had. Today is the first day that I actually felt like getting out and doing anything. For at least a week, all I wanted to do was lay in bed. I used to try to nap before and I could never nap. But just in the last year or so, I've actually been able to nap during the day, which is kind of weird. I feel guilty because I should be working or doing something because I've always been like that my entire life, always working and, um, from dawn you know, to dusk, doing something. Back when I had a regular job and I was a mechanic and a welder and all that other stuff, I'd get up in the morning, drive two hours to work, work 12 hours a day, come home, work until it was dark, go to bed, sleep for four or five hours, get up and do it again. I did that my entire life. Now, uh, now it just seems like everything is a little bit more difficult for some reason. It must be age or something kind of catching up to me. <laughs> A terrible thing. Okay, so let's get these things baited up, drop down, and we'll uh, get to fishing. Knock a few of those out. <coughs> and what I like to do is I like to put a couple of these on each hook. Just seems to me as if one works good, then two is going to work better. <laughs> I don't know. That's just what I do. Okay. This is going to be the downrigger one. Mini Hoochie. Uh, Get the downward ball out of there. Get her ready. She's plugged in. So, oh, again, I did it again. I need my downward clips. Big game monofilament. These are just uh, small clips. And of course, snap swivel on the end, crimped, you know, with uh, shrink wrap on. So, and the way I hook up my downrigger, I don't know, I know there's people that do it different ways. 
obviously you're gonna, you know, clip it to the ball, right? And clip it to the ball. And then you're gonna take your, your downrigger clip and you can either clip it to uh, the ball back here. You know, you can clip it to the back part of the ball. You could clip it up here or you can even go further. Whoa, easy. Okay, you can even go further and clip it up here so your rig is trailing below or above the ball or your ball is trailing a couple of feet below the rig. That didn't make any sense. So your rig is, <laughs> is trolling a few feet above the ball. Jeez, Gene, come on. Okay. The way I like to do it is I go straight to the ball. That way I know exactly where it's at. It doesn't have any, it's gonna have a little bit of dip because you know when you're trolling, your gear is not perfectly parallel with your ball or where you connect it to the line. You know, because gravity, even in the water, is going to be uh, is going to be forcing the, your rig to be a little bit lower. And you can tell that this this uh, this downrigger line is Dacron. It's like 500 pound test Dacron, and the reason it's on here is because last week when I was on. Let me turn that off. Last week when I was on Alder Lake, I noticed that the cable that I had on there was uh, howling. And so I wanted to get rid of that. And I just happened to have some old halibut reels that I got from my brother-in-law, uh, who actually used to own the FV Seabrook back in the 80s and 90s before uh, the deadliest catch. Uh, he gave me a bunch of uh, halibut reels that he wasn't using and they were loaded with the Dacron and although it's white and I prefer green power pro like I have on the other side I managed to get 600 feet of this 500 pound Dacron on this downrigger uh, and it off of one reel can you believe that it was off of one halibut reel but anyway um, this should take away the howling and uh, it'll make it a lot easier to operate too because that cable just is kind of weird you know it gets backlash all the time uh, it's not as good Okay. Up. Ball. So, we are ready to go. And I'm marking fish here. 25 feet and uh, about 60. So there's, uh, we're marking fish all over the place, so it shouldn't take long to get something in the works. Oh, and by the way, look at this. If you watched my last video, when my wife and I uh, were talking and making jokes about my little short net, look what I have gone and done. Look at this bad boy. Okay, I took my regular net, which was, I bought it years ago, $24.99, right? Fraybill net, cheap piece of shit net. Whoops, I shouldn't have said that. Cheap piece of crap net. But actually, it works really well. And then I went to Home Depot because I did a bunch of shopping, and the nets, uh, they're like 100 bucks, you know, for a good, you know, extendable net and with a long handle. And so I didn't want to spend 100 bucks on a net. And so what I did was I went and got a, a painter's pole, you know, that extends from three feet to six feet, and I inserted the first 12 inches of it inside of the net handle, put a couple of uh, set screws, stainless steel set screws in there right here, right here and here, covered it with some shrink wrap, covered the other end with some shrink wrap. Now I have a net that is almost six feet long, you know, as it stands, but goes out to, whoa, oh, well, yeah, it does go out, doesn't it? Okay, let's do this a different way. But a net that also goes out to 10 feet. Look at that thing. Look how far I can reach out. <laughs> now, now when those kokanee are coming to the boat, I can reach out and grab them, giving them less opportunity to fight off. And that all, it was 12 bucks for the extension handle, $24.99 for the, you know, for the net that I bought years ago. And then, you know what, a dollar worth of um, parts. I'm happy with that. Okay. 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 So let's get going. We're gonna. Ooh, I'm glad that started so easily. Okay. It looks like the surface temperature. This is telling me it is 64.59 degrees. That's pretty warm. 
I'm marking fish at about 70 feet. Now what I do with my downriggers, and I do this for salmon as well, is I'm going to go down on the, I'm going to go back from the ball 40 feet. And then when we hit 40, that's where we're going to stop it. Grab the tip and the clip, clip it in. Get away from this rod. That's in my way. Okay, so we are we are 40 feet back from the ball itself. Now we just go down. What I do is I open the bale and uh, thumb the line. So we're it was 58 feet of water, and we're marking fish all over the place. So I'm going to start with this thing at um, at 20 because this one, the surface rod is going to be more shallow than that. So we're just going to go down to 20 feet. Okay, see the line counter right there, 20 feet exactly. Take up as much slack as possible. And what you want is you want, you want the rod to be loaded. You want, whether you're fishing for salmon, kokanee, or trout, you want that rod to be loaded with as much tension as you can get on that thing without pulling it out of the clip itself. That way when a fish hits that little bit of tension from the fish, the heck was that? Oh, construction. That little bit of tension from the fish is going to break it loose. And then you're just fighting uh, the fish by itself without the downrigger. Then you bring the downrigger ball up. That's how you know using a downrigger works. Oh, look at that! I got a hit already. <laughs> wow! Look at that! Twenty feet got a hit already. Okay, let's get this one out. Can you believe that? Got hit already. It wasn't, hasn't been down there for more than 30 seconds. Now this is the hooch, this is the hoochie here that uh, Kim was just killing the fish on, on Alder Lake. We're gonna see how good it does here. I'm thinking that what is gonna work on Alder Lake is gonna work here on American Lake and what's going to work here on American Lake is going to work on Merwin for trout, for kokanee, whatever it is, it's going to work. So we lost a lot of fish on we lost a lot of fish on Alder Lake uh, last week, uh, partially because they were coming off right at the boat and we couldn't reach a far, reach them, you know, with the net. So I attributed a short net to some of the problem, and of course. When you have that problem, what you're doing is you're allowing the fish more time to come off. And so you want to get the fish in the boat as quickly as possible uh, without putting too much pressure on the fish. And so what I also did was with this hoochie here, I increased the size of the hooks uh, just a tad bit, went up one size on the hooks. Because what I noticed is the smaller hooks, when they were when they were hooked in the mouth, the the eyelid of the hook was actually pr pressing up against the jaw of the fish on the inside, and uh, I didn't like that uh, adverse pressure that it was applying to the actual tip of the hook. And so I want to get that hook, you know, on the inside and have that the you know the curve of the hook around the jaw. Okay, so we're getting, this one we're going to go out 60 feet. Sixty feet right on the button. Put her in the rod holder. Okay, now we're fishing sixty feet behind the boat with this one on the surface, a no dropper, uh, and then the downrigger is uh, twenty feet. Twenty feet down. I'm thinking that maybe, maybe. Oh, there's a fish right there. Oh, oh, lost him. Came off. Did you see that? Marking a lot of fish down there. 
I know I should wear these glasses, you know, especially in the sun to protect my eyes. But you know, I just, I just, I just don't like wearing them. They seem to impede my vision instead of provide protection. I've never been a big fan of wearing shades, but you know you should. You really should protect your eyes from the, from the sun. You know, we need the sun, the vitamin D, we need the sun for everything, you know, to live and, but that sun is not really good for you. I used to be a huge, huge sunbather when I was younger. Um, you know, I have really dark skin and I used to lay out in the sun and get brown, super brown. Um, but I don't do that anymore. Of course, I don't have time to just lay in the sun like I used to when I was a kid, work on my tan, grow my hair. <laughs> but uh, yeah, me and my wife used to party all the time when we were younger. We'd go out to, you know, Eastern Washington or wherever we were, you know, we're always laying in the sun, getting a tan, working on our tan, you know, on the boat or on the beach or whatever. And now it's to the point, you know, where she can't go in the sun hardly at all because uh, she's susceptible to skin cancer. And being exposed to the sun for me has really screwed up my eyes. Uh, I had surgery on both my eyes a few years ago for what they refer to in layman's term as a uh, surfer's eye. And it's actually pterygium. It's spelled P-T-R-Y-G-I-U-M, uh, I believe. Uh, but it's, it's, you know, if you Google it, it's a uh, surfer's eye. And what it is, is a, your eyes actually, from the tear duct area of the inside of your eyes, the, uh, you grow a layer of skin over top of your, uh, your retinas and your pupils. And so you actually start to look like a lizard with this thick layer of cloudy skin that grows over your, your eyes and it, it starts to impede your vision. And I had it in both eyes. And so they did one eye first, uh, and then uh, the next month, or six to eight weeks after that, you know, they did the other eye. And uh, it's an amazing surgery, actually, because what they do is they have to surgically remove it because it's growing on your eyeball. And so they peel it up, you know, carve it off. And then uh, once they carve it off, they have to graft another piece of good pupil skin. Believe it or not, your eyes have skin. Uh, and then they, they graft a piece of good skin over top of that area, that damaged area, and stitch it on so you have stitches on your eyeball. It's the weirdest thing, but I had it done with both eyes. Uh, now I don't have them now. My eyes look normal. I don't look like some freak lizard, like, you know, snake man or lizard man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you get it from being out in the sun. And that's why they refer to it as surfer's eye, because surfers get it a lot because they're in the sun and they're on the water. So for you guys that are fishing all the time, like me, you know, it may not be a problem when you are young, uh, but after 40 or 50 years, you know, of fishing and being on the water and having to deal with not only the sun in the sky, but the reflection off the water, uh, that's what really, that's what really gets you is the reflection off the water because it increases, you know, it doubles, maybe even more than doubles because of the reflective qualities of the water. Um, you know, the light that you receive uh, on your face and your eyes. And so, whoops, we're getting more shallow here. Now we're at 68 feet. I'm only 50 feet down. I'm going to have to make a turn here so we don't get too deep, too shallow. Uh, but you guys that are fishing, you know, heed my advice. Uh, wear sunglasses as much as you can to protect your eyes from the sun. Uh, you guys that are spending a lot of time on the water. And then if you're fishing all the time like I am, uh, you are definitely spending a lot more time on the water and uh, exposing your eyes to more light than most people would under normal circumstances because of the reflection from the water. Well, we've had three hits so far, and I'm really surprised that we haven't caught a fish yet. Big school down there at 45 feet. So that thing should be get. Ooh, it just got a hit there. That's the one that should be getting hit. So I got two schools now, one at about 15 to 30 feet and another one on the fish finder at 45 to 60. So there's definitely fish right there. Well, they seem to want to hit, they just don't, oh, there we go, there we go. That looks like a fish on. That is a fish. Now I get to use my long handle. Definitely on there. 
Oh yeah, head shakes. Head shakes, baby. You know, it doesn't matter to me if it's a 60 pound halibut, you know, a 20 pound king or a little trout. He just came off. <laughs> oh my God. How ironic. I was just talking. Okay, so this is the rig. Oh, look at that. Oh, let me show you this. Look at this. Look what's on the hook. It's a piece of the fish's lip. That is literally lip. That is, I've, I have rarely seen that. I can't believe that fish came off. It literally ripped its lip. Literally ripped its lip. Wow. And I know I wasn't putting that much pressure on it. And look at that. See, I got hit a couple times and my bait is gone. Look at that. No bait on there. Okay, now, now that we have a little bit of wind in our face, at idle, I'm doing 1 1.4, 1.46, 1.43, 1.40, 1 1.39, but I get a little bit of a gust. It knocks me down to 1.36, 1 1.35, 1 1.4, with a little, you know, wind in the face here. So I think that's perfect combination for both trout and kokanee. Oh, big, big school. There's a, oh, a fish hit to big school right there. That's amazing. Okay, let's mark that. Oh, and there's a, that's twice now that thing got hit. Okay, so that's a, that's a, a huge school of fish right there. Huge school of fish right there, and we got hit twice on the surface rod. So I marked that as a waypoint. and we will swing back over that. I'm beginning to believe that it might have something to do with that white downrigger cable and the fact that my rig is only 40 feet away from that, that white line that uh, might be spooking the fish. Oh, there's a fish right there, another hit. So you know, that would be another hit on that surface rod. Big school at 20 feet and that's exactly where this one's at. Let's bring this up. to 30. Let's bring that up a little bit. And there's another hit. Boy, they are smacking that thing on the surface here. I probably don't have any worm, any uh, maggots on there anymore. They have a tendency, oh, there you go, there you go. There's a fish, there's a fish, baby. Oh yeah, he's on there. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a nice hit. Okay, okay, let's uh, mark that as well, and we'll, we'll make a line of fish. Okay, so that's, that's a lot of hits on the surface rod right here. Better get my net, my my, my long net handle. Oh, look at this thing, yes. The length of that bad boy. Oh, I'm gonna do something crazy here. I gotta extend this out even further. Okay, I want it as long as I can, as long as it can be, almost as long as it can be. Oh, yes. Okay, now I should be able to reach out and grab it. Come on, baby. Here we go, here we go, come on. Oh, it's a nice fish, come on. Oh, yes! Right into the net. Right 
into the net. Oh. Okay, what do we have? We have a nice rainbow when he came off. Let me wet my hand and get a hold of him before he gets down in the bilge. Come here. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Ready to go? Let's go. There he goes. Right there. That's the one that did it last week, too. And what about this thing, huh? What do you think about that? Woohoo! Reach out and get him. I'm thinking that this, this downrigger rod should be getting more action. I'm going to change downriggers. I'm going to put that other downrigger on this side. Because this one has uh, the white... Looks like it just got hit. Uh, this one, oh, it did get hit. This one has the white uh, Dacron that I put on there in replace of that stainless steel cable. And I was kind of skeptical on whether or not that white Dacron was going to be spooking the fish. And since it has not got a lot of activity, or hardly any, a couple hits in the beginning, I'm going to switch downriggers and see if that has any effect on it. The other downrigger has... Um, Two, uh, 400 pound uh, power pro green dark green power pro so it's kind of invisible down there now one of the excellent features about these big John downriggers uh, and the brackets that they use is that there's there's no way to uh, have this thing fall out of the boat because it can only release one direction and that's inside and that is as long as you mount the you mount the uh, brackets on properly <laughs> So, very easy to change out. That simple. Come on, Gene. What are you doing? Control the boat. Oh, there he is. He's back. He's back. Or is he? Oh, he's on there. He's on there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now I only have, I don't have that other rod down so I can stop the boat and just fight the fish in neutral. I'll bring him up over here on the left side. I got a long net. Oh, ooh, wow, okay. Whoa, 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 <laughs> holy moly, this guy is full of piss and vinegar. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, oh, I missed the net. Oh, 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 come on. Okay, there we go. Oh, another beautiful rainbow trout. Look at that thing. There you go. Another awesome rainbow trout catch and release. So by my estimation, increasing the size of these hooks has made a significant difference. A significant difference. They are getting hooked up properly and they are not coming off. And then we're gonna go down with this darker green cable to see if that makes any difference. See if that white uh, might've been uh, scaring the fish, spooking the fish. Down boy. Okay, we're gonna go to 20. There's a fish already. The fish already hit it. Came off. Oh man. No, he's still on there. He's still on there. I didn't even get the thing down 10 feet. Oh, it just came off. Oh. That was another nice trout. Okay. 
So, apparently that green cable didn't spook that fish. I wonder if I can dye it. Dye it, dye it black or dye it green. It's spooled up on the, on the spool. I should be able to mix up some, uh, some food coloring or some kind of dye and pour it onto the spool and have it soak into that line. I'll try that first before I go spend the money on 600 feet of 400 pound Power Pro. You might have noticed that about me. Um, I'm not, I'm not broke. I mean, I'm, I'm not rich. Uh, I'm not wealthy, but I have enough money to, to live my life the way I want to live it. Um, I'm not working much anymore. I'm devoting most of my time, you know, to making fishing videos and enjoying the rest of my life. And so, having said that, I still live my life the way I did when I was, when I was broke. And I, you know, I, I guess I was never poor. I grew up in a, in a middle class family. My dad did the best that he could with what he had. Uh, we always had a house, a roof over our head. We always had time to go fishing, but we never did the luxurious things, you know, the extra things that, that families do when you have uh, disposable, a lot of disposable income, like go out to dinner. You know, when I was a kid, we didn't go out to dinner. You sat at, you sat at home and we made and we ate dinner uh, every night. And that's how I kind of raised my family the same way. You know, we, we don't go out to dinner a lot, but we, we do, as a matter of fact, we were just up the other night. So, you know, Life is a little different than it was when I was growing up. You know, I have more money and more financial security than I did when I was younger and growing up. But a lot of the things that I do, you would still think that I was broke because I just like to live my life that way. I don't have any new vehicles. Uh, I've had new vehicles before. I've had new trucks. I've had Corvettes. I've had all that stuff that people waste money on. And I don't have any of that stuff anymore. Not that I couldn't have it, but it just, it didn't really do anything for me other than waste my money. And so I learned over the years to become frugal. Um, I've always been the kind of person that, that would, uh, you know, fix things until I couldn't fix them anymore before I tried to buy something new. I don't like the new products that they have today. I'd rather fix my old stuff. It's more reliable, it's more dependable, it's easier to work on. Uh, but that's just the way I am. If I can fix something or repair something or modify something, I'm gonna do that before I can, before I'm gonna be willing to spend my hard earned dollars uh, on something that I don't really need if I can fix something that I have or make something that I have work. Oh, fish. Yes, there he is. Oh, big school right there too. Okay, let's mark it. Let's mark that spot. Oh, I think he came off. Oh man, he was on there too. Let's go back to 60. Ah. Man. Oh, there he is, he's back, he's back. Come on, baby. Oh, there he is, oh yeah. Oh, 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 there's one there, I got a double. I got a double, oh no. Let's break this one off, if we can. Oh shoot. Oh, he's on there. What I want to do is I want to break that one off and let him fight his way up to the surface. Oh no, I really messed up. Got a tangle on my tip. Okay. So I'm gonna let him fight his way up on the sur on, so he'll be out there on the surface away from the boat so I can land this fish. Oh, this is a nice big rainbow. That one came off, but he got hit, so it's that line. Oh yeah, look at him back there. He is back there fighting up a storm. Okay. Go 
Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh. Oh, yes. There we go. We got him. We got him. We got it. Oh, yeah. We did it. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, this is a, oh, he's got that hook way down in there. Way down in there. This guy is not gonna survive. We're gonna have to take him home. Let's get this guy rinsed off. Well, that was fun. This is, this hoochie, man, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you guys, this hoochie right there, that has just been a killer in combination with this half-fast dodger. Man, this one had a fish on it too. After I put on that different downrigger. Oh boy, this one's gonna go 60 feet. 60 feet behind the boat. Sixty feet. Okay. I forgot what I was saying. About improvising and fixing things, I think, because I was thinking about that downrigger cable being the wrong color. And man, I'm getting hot. We're going uh, 1.57 miles an hour. Seems to be perfect for trout. Trout seem to like it. I don't really care if I'm catching trout or, trout or kokanee. I'm told that uh, the kokanee on American Lake are like unicorns anymore. So, you know, if I catch a kokanee, great. But these trout are awesome. Fun to catch, as you can tell. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't really matter. And then I caught a fish while I was talking. Uh, it doesn't matter to me whether it's a big halibut, a big salmon, or a 12-inch trout. I mean, these things are fun to catch. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's not about being a fish snob and having to catch the, the brightest fish, the most beautiful fish, the biggest fish all the time. It's not about that. It's about being out here. It's about fishing and catching fish and having fun. I mean, it's nice to catch a big halibut. It's nice to catch a big salmon. But to be totally honest with you, you know, I'm, ooh, 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 there, there he is. Oh, it broke it off. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. I can get this boat straight back and bring it up so it doesn't get entangled with that other rod. Wow, look at the look at the fight on that guy. Okay, so this is the I got another hit on this, got I got a hit on it, hooked the fish and lost it, and now I got this one. Whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. See what I'm talking about? I mean this is a this is a 12-inch fish. Who says this can't be fun? You know, you don't have to catch a monster fish all the time to have fun, man. It ain't about, ain't about the biggest and the best. It's about catching fish. I keep my tip down in the water. Oh yeah, oh baby. Come on. Okay. Oh, another nice trout. Another nice trout. Look at that bad boy. Oh, this way. Around the cable. Control the boat. Okay. I try to release this guy without bringing him in the boat without netting him. It looks like he's hooked on the outside. So we might be able to make sure he's released without, oh no. Yeah, without hurting him too bad. Oh, he's got both hooks in him. There's no way that fish was coming loose. Look at that, he's got both hooks. 
I'm not going to be able to save this fish either. He has both hooks in him. One hook in his bottom jaw. One hook in the side of the mouth and one hook in his bottom jaw. There's no way that fish was going to survive release. But nonetheless, huh? Not a big giant salmon or a 50 pound halibut, but let me tell you something, man. These things are fun to catch. It is uh, 12.26 and I have to quit my one. Well, I don't have to, but, oh, there's a fish hit, but I'm going to. Let me speed it up. See, now that's on the drop. So that, so we're going around the corner on the inside and that thing is dropping down deeper. And that's what usually when you get a hit, when there's some kind of variation in the, the tempo or the speed of you know, the presentation that you're offering. Oh man, whew. Well, this concludes another fishing trip and I'm glad you were able to join me. So for the last 20 minutes or so, I've been rambling on. I didn't realize what time it was. I wasn't catching any fish, so it worked out perfect for me anyway. I don't know about you. You're probably bored as hell thinking, who's this guy even talking like this? Um, but I got to head out because I told my wife I was going to be back. But I want to I wanna thank you again for joining me on another fishing adventure. Ah. Whew. It was, a, it was a great trip, only a few hours on the lake. We caught four or five trout, no kokanee, uh, but I don't know if there's any kokanee left in this lake anyway. But nonetheless, it was a fun outing. Thank you for joining me. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, hit the like button, thumbs up button, I appreciate it. And stay tuned because we are taking off for the Cowlitz River um, tomorrow and then we are going to go from the Cowlitz River down south and hit Merwin Reservoir. So that is happening uh, just in a couple of days. We're going to hit Mer Merwin Reservoir on Friday, and I should have the video for that thing uploaded by maybe you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that of next week. Peace, love, tight lines, and I'll see you on the water. <sighs> okay. Oh man, there is a ton of fish down there right here and I gotta go. Oh well, that's the way it is. 1247. Let's get out of here. Looking good.